Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra. Now, in today's part 17, we will continue talking about the matrix product. In particular, we will list a lot of properties we can use in calculations. However, before we start, I want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. And please don't forget to test your knowledge with the quiz in the description. Okay, so now the definition of the matrix product or matrix multiplication we have already introduced in the last video. So let's quickly recall that it is a map where we have two matrices as an input and one matrix as an output. And now for the input you know it's required that the number of columns of A coincides with the number of rows of B. Moreover, you also know that for the resulting matrix we omit the dot and just write AB. Now, in the last video, we have seen that we have different possibilities, which are all equivalent, to define this matrix product. Therefore here, now I want to show you an additional one. This one simply explains how each component of the output is formed. So the question is, what is the ijth entry of the matrix AB? However, from the last video, we already know it's given by a standard inner product. For this, we can simply use the entries of A, which we denote by lowercase a, and the entries of B. And of course, they are denoted as well with lowercase b. And now please recall, we know that the row of A is fixed and the column of B is fixed. And moreover, the inner product is given by summing over this new index L from 1 to n. There again, you see, it's needed that we have the same number n here. Okay, then in summary, you see, this is the formula you can remember for the matrix product. So we sum over the index in the middle, it vanishes in some sense, and what remains are the outer indices. Okay, then I would say we are ready to talk about the important properties of this map. In fact, a lot of calculation rules that hold for the real numbers also hold for matrices. However, it's not exactly the same as we will see soon. So maybe let's start here, combining the matrix product with the matrix addition we already know. There, please recall part 11, where we have already discussed all the properties for the matrix addition. Okay, so now the combination here means that we multiply from the right hand side with a matrix C. In particular, now we assume that A and B lie in this set here, and the matrix C should be an element of this set. Only then is the whole combination here well defined. However, in this case, then we can write the whole thing as two multiplications. So we have A times C plus B times C. So you see, this is a common distributive law for the matrix product as we have expected it. However, you should see it's formulated in the multiplication from the right hand side. This is important because in the definition you see the order matters. Hence, in the same sense, we could formulate it that the two matrices A and B are on the right hand side. And then we would multiply from the left hand side with a matrix D. And then the result should be D times A plus D times B. So in summary, you see we have two distributive laws. Now, at this point, you might remember that we also discussed distributive laws when we talked about the matrix addition in part 11. However, there we didn't talk about the matrix product, but rather about the scalar multiplication. Hence, now you see, we have two multiplications concerning matrices. Therefore, the next part here should tell us that the matrix product is compatible with the scalar multiplication. So we take a scalar, a real number lambda, and multiply it with the matrix product. More precisely, this means here that we calculate this matrix product and then we multiply it with a scalar from the left hand side. But it turns out it's the same as first calculating the scalar multiplication with A and then multiplying with B. In other words, we have lambda times A and then the matrix product with B. Moreover, you might already guess here, it's also possible to first calculate the scalar multiplication with B. So this would be A in the matrix product with the new matrix lambda times B. So we learn here all these three combinations, how to apply the scalar multiplication to the matrix products, give the same result. 
So now with this rule in mind, we should talk about the associative law for the matrix product. Of course, it looks similarly, but now we combine three matrices. So first, you could multiply A and B, and then apply a third matrix C from the right-hand side. So you know, if the matrices have the correct shapes, this is well defined. And then it turns out, we get the same result when we first multiply B with C. However, the overall order needs to be the same. So we have parentheses here to multiply B with C, and then we multiply A from the left-hand side. And there we have it, this is the associative law for the matrix multiplication. And now it turns out, all these properties here are easy to prove when you use this sum rule for the definition of the matrix product. Because then, as you can see, we just deal with real numbers, and we know a lot of rules for the real numbers. Therefore, in the proof, you just need to apply these rules here. Therefore, I think it's sufficient for you to understand the whole idea here if I just show you one part of it. So, let's prove the associative law here. In order to do this, we just look at two arbitrarily chosen components on the left-hand side. And then, of course, in the proof, we want to reach the corresponding components on the right-hand side. And now you already know, we do this by using the definition from above. Hence, first this matrix here with the entries i, l, times the entries of the matrix on the right-hand side given by c, l, j. Then, at this point, you should see, we can use the definition from above again for this combination here. Therefore, here in the next step, let's put that in. More precisely, it means again we have a sum. However, for this sum we need a new index, so maybe to avoid confusion, let's simply call it z. Speaking of confusion, of course, this end index here, the number of columns or rows, now could be different. And maybe here in the proof is good to avoid too many indices, so let's just omit this one here. So in other words, here we just assume that we know that we sum over all possibilities. Indeed, this is a common thing you do if you want to keep your proof readable. Okay, but now, by using the definition of our matrix product here, with the correct indices, we get AIZ times BZL. Of course, here it's important that we use the correct indices. Hence, we see all that remains here is just sums and products of real numbers. And there we know, by the distributive laws, we can rearrange that a lot. So for example, it's allowed to change the order of the sum symbols. Moreover, because you see the factor aiz has nothing to do with the sum over l, we can put it in front of the sum. And then we can immediately conclude what we have here on the right hand side is exactly the matrix product b with c. So let's write that with the correct indices. So we see we need the indices z and j. Therefore, the important part here is, we have the index z in the middle again. So in other words, this here is also a matrix product. Namely, it's a, b, c at the correct indices. And as expected, it's the index i and the index j. Therefore, we get that this equality here holds for all possible indices, and so also this equality for the matrices holds. Okay, with this, the associative law for the matrix product is proven. And then, to close this video today, I tell you one important thing you really should remember. Namely, for the matrix product here, we don't have a commutative law in a general sense. This means, in general, it's not allowed to change the order of the matrix multiplication. So in special cases, it could work, but in general, it wouldn't work. Therefore, I would say, let's look at a 2 times 2 example. So we multiply the matrix with 0, 1, minus 1, 0 as entries, with the matrix that has only 1s as entries. Hence, you see, this is not complicated at all. So we get 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1. But then, let's do it the other way around. So now, this matrix here is on the right hand side, which means the matrix multiplication will change. We see that immediately, because now the first entry here is minus 1, 
And indeed, this one is also minus one and this one is plus one. Hence, the important thing to note here is, this is not the same matrix. So it's simply unequal as matrices. Now, this is really important to remember. We still have the associative law in the sense above, but we are not allowed to exchange two matrices in the product. So indeed, the order for the matrices matters. Indeed, in the next video, we will see that this makes sense on an abstract level. So let's meet there and have a nice day. Bye.